This is KGW News at Noon. We start this afternoon with breaking news. In just the last hour, United Airlines has lifted a nationwide ground stop. Some type of system-wide technology issue forced United to halt all flights in the U.S. and Canada at their departure gates earlier this morning. There could still be some lingering delays, so United says it is working with customers to help them rebook flights if needed. Meanwhile, in local news, the man accused of stabbing two teenagers in a racial attack at a Mac stop will be in court this afternoon. New court documents show what unfolded Saturday in southeast Portland. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Drew Carney. The suspect is accused of stabbing one of those teens in the chest, and doctors say the knife nicked his heart. For more on this, we go to Evan Watson, who joins us from the KGW newsroom. So, Evan, what else have we learned about this? Well, Drew, court documents say 25 year old Adrian Cummins yelled the N word at two black teenagers and then stabbed them. One of the victims has serious injuries from being stabbed in the chest. Doctors at OHSU had to perform emergency surgery. This all happened Saturday in the area of Southeast 92nd and Flavel, where the teens were riding the Max train. Police reviewed Max train footage and say there was nothing that instigated Cummins' alleged attack on the teens. After he got off the train, Cummins was arrested a few blocks away. According to the affidavit, one of the officers said he saw Cummins remove a small black folding knife and drop it. The officers found a knife near the scene. During the investigation, police learned that Cummins also robbed a nearby convenience store. The manager says he confronted Cummins when he tried to steal several snacks. He told officers that Cummins pulled a knife on him and threatened him. We dug into Cummins' background and learned he's a convicted felon who served time in Florida. In July, he was cited in our area for menacing with a knife and fentanyl possession. And back in April, police say Cummins fought a man at another Mac stop in downtown Portland and had a gun on him. Charges for that case were dismissed. We'll be in court this afternoon and give you an update on what happens starting the news at 4. Drew? All right, Evan Watson reporting live from our newsroom here this afternoon. We also have new photos to share of another man suspected of a racially motivated assault in Portland's Old Town two weeks ago. It happened on August 21st at Southwest 2nd and Pine. We talked to the owner of Stumptown Otaku just a few days after. He told us a man riding a bike yelled slurs at his family, flicked a lit cigarette at his mom, and then threw a punch at him. The owner also told us that he pepper sprayed the suspect until he rode away. There's now a cash reward of up to $2,500 for any information that leads to an arrest. All right, let's take a look at some of today's national headlines, starting with this. The impeachment trial of Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is underway. He faces accusations of bribery and corruption that have overshadowed him for years. Paxton is already on the record calling his impeachment a politically motivated sham. In Pennsylvania, the search area has expanded for a convicted murderer who escaped from prison last week. Pennsylvania State Police also released three images of the man who was spotted on a nearby trail cam. Those images show him walking with a duffel bag, backpack, and a hooded sweatshirt. Last headline here, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's recent health episodes are not the result of a stroke or seizure disorder. The U.S. Capitol physician released that information today. Last week, McConnell froze during a press conference in Kentucky and wasn't able to respond to a question. It's actually the second time that's happened to him in a matter of weeks. Earlier this year, McConnell suffered a concussion after falling and hitting his head at a dinner in Washington, D.C. Oregon's largest homeless shelter could close this week. To stay open, Bobby Lakes Hope Center in North Portland is asking Multnomah County for $5 million. Right now, Bobby gets no money from the county. The shelter has 175 beds and enough room for 300 more people. Multnomah County is currently sitting on $65 million that's meant for homeless services. So the county is expected to vote on how to spend that $65 million by the end of this week. We talked to a man who's been on the receiving end of Bybee Lakes services. We're in a pathetic situation with a real hard situation. And if Bybee does that, well, sure, that'll be tragic to almost every, well, everyone here. Multnomah County Chair Jessica Vega Peterson told us last month that her team is working to find a solution when it comes to the future of Bybee Lakes. A popular outdoor spot in the Fairview area will close for several months starting today. Blue Lake Regional Park will undergo sewer and water system upgrades to improve its splash pad and other amenities. The park's fishing pier will also be refurbished. The disc golf course at Blue Lake Park will stay open during construction. 
but the parking is going to be limited. The park is expected to fully reopen sometime next spring. Tonight, the Portland Public School Board is expected to vote on a plan to take over Grant Bowl from Portland Parks and Rec and replace the field's turf immediately. This comes after the Parks and Rec Department said last month that turf replacement would have to wait until sometime later next year. The field has repeatedly failed safety inspections, leaving the football and soccer teams at Grand High School with no home field to practice or play on. All right, we're going to turn it over to the Weather Center now. Chris McGinnis is filling in for Rod Hill this afternoon. Chris, what do you have for us? Well, after kind of a gray weekend, Drew, I can count on one hand the number of clouds I can see outside our window here. One, two, three, four. How about that? So the sky conditions improving. Check this out. We take it live to the Oregon coast. Cannon Beach right now looking beautiful. A little bit of a marine layer offshore, but right over the beach, it looks like it is completely clear. We've cleared out in the gorge. This is a live look from the east end of the gorge out near the Dalles from Oregon's veterans home in the Dalles. Our camera pointed back towards Mount Hood. You can see it, not so hazy, not cloudy at all out there. And as we go up into the mountains, the live look from Timberline Lodge. Earlier this morning, we had a nice uh, cloud deck here kind of banked up against the Cascades. That has uh, evaporated, it's gone, and we are clear as a bell. You can see Mount Jefferson and the Three Sisters off in the distance. So cloud cover quickly eroding here. And if it hasn't in your neighborhood just yet, it will. We will finish the day mostly sunny, I think. Uh, for most of us. And there's the live look right now from our Wells Fargo Sky Camera. 66 degrees, last check at PDX, elsewhere 64 in Hillsboro. Hillsboro, you started off the morning in the 40s. Burns was in the 30s early today. You're now up to 71. And the plan here for Portland the rest of this afternoon, I have temperatures inching into the mid 70s later today. I've got us at 76 today. Uh, probably a little warmer as we get towards the end of the work week. I am eyeing some 80 degree temperatures in our 70 forecast. We'll take a look at that and look ahead, to, of course, to next weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, we'll check back in with you here, Chris, in less than 10 minutes, as a matter of fact. Right now, though, we want to get to some more local headlines, starting with a Portland police officer who was hurt in a crash on Southeast Powell Boulevard near 92nd Avenue. So the crash happened just before 7 o'clock last night, and you can actually see some of the damage to the front end of the officer's vehicle there. We're told that the officer was taken to the hospital, but the injuries are not life-threatening. The officer was responding to a domestic violence call and collided with another car, the driver and two passengers of that second vehicle suffered minor injuries. A former Portland police chief is now leaving her post in Philadelphia. Danielle Outlaw announced her resignation today. Outlaw is leaving the Philly force to take a leadership position with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. She stepped down as Portland's police chief in 2019 to take the job in Philadelphia. Her three years there were spent dealing with pandemic lockdowns, Black Lives Matter protests, and frequent turmoil over race and policing. In Hillsboro, a devastating fire yesterday morning has left a mother and her six children without a home. KJW's Daisy Caballero talked to the family about how they managed to make it out. A Hillsborough family of seven is left without a home. They woke up to their apartment going up in flames Monday morning, telling me they lost everything. I couldn't see or breathe. Um, eyes were burning. The Martinez family is faced with a heartbreaking reality after their wall heater caught fire on the second floor of their apartment in Hillsboro around 6.30 a.m. Witnesses called 911 after seeing heavy fire and smoke spewing out of the windows where the family of seven, their two cousins and two dogs were inside sleeping. I heard fire, so my, my instinct was to get water. Omar Martinez is the oldest sibling that jumped into action after his eight year old brother saw smoke coming into the bedroom from the bottom of the door. That's when he woke up his mom. Omar ran into the hallway full of smoke to find water to put out the fire, but says the flames were too out of control. Thankfully, everyone ran downstairs and out the door to safety. I saw a lot of flames, so I ran back and to at least help, or try to help, but it was too much. Hillsboro Fire and Rescue says fire alarms did go off. They arrived within minutes of the 911 calls, but it was too late to save their belongings upstairs. Uh, the fire investigator concluded that the cause of the fire uh, was combustible materials that were too close to a baseboard heater, which then ultimately ignited and caused that fire. Officials believe it was a heater that automatically turns on by itself when the room temperature drops below a certain temperature. 
The Red Cross is assisting the family with a place to stay for the next few days. And while the Martinez family doesn't know what the future holds, they're staying optimistic and thankful no one was hurt. We're all in different emotions or in, uh, emotions, but um, yeah, we're going to get through this. It's just another, another life experience. Now the family has set up a GoFundMe account and you can find that at KGW.com. In Hillsboro, Lisa Caballero, KGW News.